Welcome to Dermatology Explained. Today we'll be doing something different. We'll be focusing, instead of a dermatological condition, we'll be focusing on some common medications that are used in dermatology, and this will form our video series on drugs in dermatology. Today's video presentation will focus on oral retinoids specifically acetretin and isotretinoin, which are probably our two most commonly used oral retinoids in the realm of dermatology. So retinoids is an overall name for a group of compounds which are essentially oral vitamin A derivatives. They are structural and functional analogues of vitamin A that are used to treat various dermatologic conditions. They act by exerting multiple effects on cellular differentiation and proliferation. They have effects on the immune system and can have effects on embryonic development. In the early days, observations documented that vitamin A deficiency induced epidermal hyperkeratosis, squamous metaplasia of mucous membranes, and various keratinization disorders. And that led to the hypothesis and idea that replacement of vitamin A might be able to correct some of these precancerous conditions and keratinization disorders. And this was the initial clue that led to vitamin A playing a significant role in the field of dermatology. However, using vitamin A straight up was not appropriate due to its narrow therapeutic window, and it was associated with a lot of potential side effects and adverse effects. And that led to increased research and focus on derivatives of vitamin A, which could have similar benefits on skin conditions, but without all the side effects or so minimizing the potential risk of adverse side effects. In terms of vitamin A derivatives, predominantly they comprise of retinol, retinol, and retinoic acid. Retinol is an alcohol, and the way you can remember that is retinol ends in OL, alcohol ends in OL, and that's involved in repro production with an O. Retinal ends in AL, so it's an aldehyde, and it has retina in the word, so it's important in vision. And retinoic acid is involved in epidermal differentiation and growth. So to appreciate the importance of vitamin A, we can step back and take a look at the history of the development of vitamin A derivatives. So in the early 1940s, vitamin A was first tested in clinical practice in dermatologic conditions. And that was when it was found that it had a very narrow therapeutic index. The first oral vitamin A came in the form of oral or trans retinoic acid, otherwise known as tretinoin. In the 1960s, it was discovered that use of the topical version of tretinoin was more tolerable. It wasn't associated with as significant side effects compared to oral tretinoin, and it demonstrated some potential promising results in some conditions, including ichthyosis, as well as pityriasis ruba pilaris. In the later 1960s, there was a trial of topical tretinoin in acne vulgaris, which had some very promising results. Later in the 1980s, isotretinoin, which is the retinoic acid derivative of vitamin A, was approved for severe acne, FDA approved, due to its excellent clinical outcomes. That was a first generation retinoid and is currently still in use today. In 1986, etretinate was tested. This is a second generation aromatic retinoid. However, it was later phased out in the next decade due to its significant long half-life. This was replaced by its metabolite acetretin, which is also a second generation retinoid. And later there were several other third generation retinoids developed, including bexarotene, which has been approved in some cases of cutaneous T-cell lymphomas, as well as alitretinoin, which is approved in Europe for chronic hand eczema. So just to reiterate, vitamin A has a number of derivatives. Retinoic acid is the biologically active form of vitamin A that is converted from retinol and retinol esters through a number of enzymatic steps. 
involving oxidation and hydroxylation. Now, vitamin A can't be synthesized in vivo by the human body, and so it has to be acquired through the diet. The retinal esters can be found in liver and fat, as well as eggs and milk. There is also another precursor of vitamin A called beta carotene, which form a group of compounds called the car carotenoids. These are synthesized by plants and function as photosensitive structures. One key source would be from green, yellow, leafy vegetables. These beta carotene compounds, when ingested, are oxidized into vitamin A. And for every one molecule of beta carotene that's ingested and converted, it's equivalent to two molecules of retinal. So retinal AL. And this conversion is done in the intestines before it is absorbed. It's important to know that beta carotene is not considered a retinoid. You might see in other sources another way of writing or denoting retinal, that is 11 cis isomer or the 11 trans isomer. This is a more detailed version demonstrating the steps involved in conversion of retinal esters to vitamin A retinol, and that gets converted to re retinaldehyde, retinal AL, and that gets converted to the biologically active form retinoic acid. And under the umbrella of retinoic acid, there are several different forms of retinoic acid, which make up different generations. We've already alluded to all trans retinoic acid, which is a tretinoin first generation. We've also alluded to 13 cis retinoic acid, which is isotretinoin. The diagram on the bottom left hand side of the screen demonstrates the concentration of the different forms of vitamin A derivatives in the skin and in the blood. You can see here that in the epidermis, the highest concentration is the retinal esters, whereas in the dermis, the highest concentration is retinol, and in the blood, the highest concentration is retinol as well. Now, all classes of retinoids have the same basic structure, and with each generation of retinoid that's developed, there's slight changes in parts of the structure, which gives the retinoid its property. The structure of retinoids includes, on the left-hand side, the cyclohexanyl ring. In the middle is a conjugated side chain, and the right-hand side is a polar terminal group. Now, this slide summarizes the key changes across the first, second, and third generations of retinoid. The reason why different generations of retinoid was developed is that in order to achieve the highest therapeutic index, it was required to design retinoids that are receptor specific and function specific. And the goal is to activate only the desirable pathways and minimize activation of pathways which lead to adverse events. For the first generation of retinoids, manipulation of the polar N group on the right hand side of the molecule here forms the first generation of retinoids. You can see here that the two key ones include 13 cis retinoic acid, or isotretinoin. It also includes all trans retinoic acid, which is tretinoin, as well as alitretinoin, which is nine cis retinoic acid. And to reiterate, these different compounds were generated by changing the polar end group and the side chain of the basic structure of the retinoid. In the second generation of retinoids, these are also known as monoaromatic. Mono meaning one, aromatic meaning the cyclic N group being substituted with a ring system. So in second generation retinoids, these are synthesized by replacing the cyclic N group of vitamin A with various ring systems. And the two key compounds to know, the first one is acetretin, and the second one is etretinate, which is no longer in production due to its significantly long half-life. However, it's important to know that in the third generation of retinoids, these are considered polyaromatic. These agents are formed through cyclization of the polyene side chain. And the key compounds include 
tazarotene and adapalene, as well as topical retinoid vexarotene. So even though the third generation retinoids are much more potent than earlier retinoids, unfortunately, the therapeutic index shows no significant improvement because of their increased toxicity associated as well. Although not noted here on this slide, there's also now a fourth generation retinoid, so topical retinoid, um, trifaritine, which is currently used for acne vulgaris. The oral bioavailability of the retinoids are significantly enhanced when administered with food particularly a fatty meal. This is due to the lipophilic property of the retinoid structure, which allows it to absorb better when eaten with a fatty meal. Retinoid metabolism is predominantly hepatic. It involves oxidation and change shortening to biologically inactive and polar metabolites, which allows for biliary and renal elimination. In terms of the mechanism of action of retinoids, these work by binding to specific nuclear retinoid receptors, and in terms of its biological effects, these include cellular differentiation, anti-proliferation, anti-inflammation, anti-keratinization, and inhibition of neutrophil chemotaxis. The diagram on the right-hand side here demonstrates what happens in the process of retinoid binding to its receptor. So the retinoid is transported to the cell nucleus, via cytosolic retinoid acid binding protein, or CRAB-P, so C-R-A-B-P, cytosolic retinoid acid binding protein. And when the retinoid is in the nucleus, it can bind to the retinoid receptor. Now I will go through this in more detail on the next slide, but there's essentially two members of the retinoid receptor, RAR and RXR. And essentially binding to the receptor complex by the retinoid then allows for the activation of the retinoid acid response element in the gene, in the appropriate genes. The, it can lead to upregulation or downregulation of gene activity, and that leads to the biological effects that we see with retinoids. In terms of more details on the retinoid acid receptors, these belong to steroid, thyroid, hormone receptor superfamily. It can exist as alpha, beta, or gamma types. And specifically in human skin, the important receptors are RXR gamma and RAR alpha. RAR and RXR are ligand-dependent transcription factors that regulate gene expression. As alluded to in the previous slide, when activated, they can upregulate expression of genes via the retinoid acid response elements, which is on the promoter region of the target genes. And it can also downregulate other transcription factors. RAR always dimerizes with RXR, whereas RXRs can act as homodimers, but with another RXR, or it can participate in the formation of heterodimers with a variety of other nuclear receptors, such as vitamin D3, thyroid hormone, um, RAR, and as such, RXR is, is quite important in crosstalk between nuclear hormone signaling pathways. So just to go back to Another diagram, which essentially demonstrates the same pathway, the retinoid compound is moved into the nucleus via the cytosolic retinoid acid binding protein. When it's in the nucleus, it will then bind to the retinoid receptor. In this particular example, we can see here a heterodimer between RAR and RXR. When this heterodimer is activated by, it was bound by the retinoid compound, then this complex can then activate the retinoid acid response element in the gene and when otherwise known as RAR or RARE, R-A-R-E, when the retinoid acid response element is activated, this can lead to either upregulation of certain genes or downregulation of certain other genes, which then leads to the biological effects of the retinoid acid. And this includes differentiation, proliferation, apoptosis, immune modulation go through more details of these biological effects on the next slide. So the biological effects of retinoids is quite significant. So it has effects on keratinization, such as normalizing hyperproliferative epidermis, as well as leading to clinical desquamation and peeling. It has an impact on immunologic systems and it has anti-inflammatory effect by inhibiting pro-inflammatory cytokines and phagocytic enzymes. It can increase cell antigens of T cells and natural killer cells, 
decrease neutrophil migration, as well as inhibit transcription factor AP1. Retinoids can also reduce sebaceous gland size and activity, and that is quite specific to isotretinoin. It can have anti-tumor effects such via increased caspase proteolytic activity, as well as suppression of COX-2 and PGE2 activity in transformed cells. And this is particularly important with the use of acetretin in pre-malignant states. It also has an impact on matrix components and can inhibit, and thus can inhibit wound healing at higher concentrations. Here's another table which summarizes some of the biological functions from retinoids. An important consideration of retinoid compounds is its teratogenicity. Retinoids are involved in embryogenesis, and in particular, it's involved in spatial pattern of differentiation, as well as activity and migration of neural crests. As such, any drugs that have an impact on this process can lead to an impact, a negative impact on organogenesis. And that is why retinoids are categorized as category X drugs, which are drugs which have a high risk of causing permanent damage to the fetus, and they shouldn't be used in pregnancy or when there's a possibility of pregnancy. Isotretinoin teratogenicity affects 4% of pregnancies occurring within one month of cessation. It is teratogenic, but not mutagenic. It can lead to spontaneous abortion in one third of cases, as well as increased incidence of stillbirths. It causes defects in 20% of births. And these abnormalities occur in almost 50% of full-term pregnancies in which there was a first trimester exposure to isotretinoin. So this is a very big deal. And it's very important to count our patients on appropriate contraception and to not fall pregnant whilst on this medication. Acetretin, although does not have as long a half-life as etretinate, it still has a three-year contraception period recommended as in a proportion of patients on acetretin, if they are also, for example, taking or ingesting alcohol, that can have an effect on the metabolism such that a small proportion of acetretin gets converted to etretinate and that has a long half-life and stays in the body for a long time. And that's why a three-year contraception period is recommended. In terms of the teratogenic effects of oral retinoids, this can include an impact on the cardiovascular system. It can have defects in the development of the major vessels. So you can see coactation of aorta, aortic arch hyperplasia, transposition of great vessels, tetralogy of Fallot, ventral septal defect. You can have an impact on thymus development. So you see thymic hyperplasia, aplasia, or ectopia. It has a significant impact on craniofacial development. So you can see microcardia or anotia, absence of ears, cleft palate or low set ears. It has a profound impact on the central nervous system. So they can present with hydrocephalus, microcephaly, microphthalmia, cerebellar defects, and nerve palsies. And this is a image from acne.org to summarize some of the key defects associated with azotretinoin. As alluded to already, skull defects, central nervous system defects, ear defects, eye defects, facial, thymus, thyroid, cardiovascular, and can lead to spontaneous abortion and death. So this is a very serious matter. In terms of FDA approved indications for oral retinoids, these are listed here on the left-hand side. So acetretin has been approved for use in psoriasis, as well as different forms of psoriasis, including postural psoriasis, erythrodermic psoriasis, and severe recalcitrant psoriasis. Isotretinoin has been approved in nodular cystic acne and recalcitrant acne with tendency for scarring. Vexorotene has been approved for cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. However, there are also a number of off-label uses of oral retinoids as well, and this does make up our day-to-day -day practice in dermatology. So this includes acne-related conditions, rosacea. It is used in some cases of difficult-to-treat hydroadenitis operativa. It has been reported and used in dissecting cellulitis of the scalp, very widely used in keratinization disorders, including pityriasis, rubropilaris, and ichthyoses keratodermas and Darius disease. It can be used in a number of inflammatory disorders, including lupus, lichen planus, lichen sclerosis as well. 
and it is used in chemo prevention. Isotretinoin is also known as 13-cis-retinoic acid. It was initially used in ichthyotic disorders in the 1970s, but was found to be useful for treating nodulocystic acne. It has 25% bioavailability, which is slightly improved with food, fatty food. There's a peak level after three hours of ingestion. In terms of its transport, 99.9% .9 is bound to albumin. In terms of its metabolism, it is oxidized to 4 oxoisotretinoin, which is its major metabolite. Its half-life is 10 to 20 hours and generally completely clears within a month. And in terms of its excretion, it is equally excreted in the urine and feces. We can compare this to acetretin, which is an acid metabolite of etretinate. It has 60% bioavailability with food. Its peak levels occur four hours after ingestion. In terms of transport, it binds predominantly to albumin, but to a lesser extent to lipoproteins. Its metabolism is via glucuronidation. Its half-life is longer than isotretinoin. It's 50 hours. And generally speaking, it's completely eliminated by three weeks. However, there is a small proportion of the acetretin molecules which can be converted to etretinate, especially when concurrent alcohol is ingested. It's difficult to predict the amount which is converted and whether someone has, for example, that exposure to alcohol and therefore a three-year contraception is recommended. Excretion is also equally in the urine and feces. In terms of contraindications of oral retinoids, absolute contraindications include pregnancy or females who are likely to become pregnant, non-compliance with contraception and breastfeeding. Relative contraindications include moderate to severe cholesterol or triglyceride elevation, significant hepatic dysfunction, significant renal dysfunction, hyperlipidemia, particularly hypertriglyceridemia that cannot be controlled, and concomitant hepatotoxic medications such as methotrexate. In terms of contraception options, estrogen progesterone combined pill is recommended. A mini pill, which is a low dose progesterone, is generally not recommended as it alters the cervical mucus and the effectiveness may be reduced by the action of oral retinoids on the epithelial mucosal layer. It also has a higher failure rate that's been reported. Other contraception options include Depo-Provera, an intrauterine device combined with a second method of contraception, such as barrier condoms, as well as abstinence. In terms of baseline and monitoring investigations, again, make an assessment based on your local health district guidelines. However, as a general guide at baseline, history examination should be performed, a full blood count, electrolytes, urea, creatinine, liver function testing, fasting lipids, and beta HCG for, for females of the appropriate age group should be performed. At follow-up periods, um, which can be every two or three months, uh, repeat blood testing should be performed, and if any symptoms of myalgia or myositis, then creatinine kinase should be considered. If someone is prescribed with long-term isotretinoin or acetretin, then consideration of imaging, including x-ray of wrists, ankles, and thoracic spine. And some have recommended ophthalmological examination if there's a history of cataracts or retinopathy, as well as measuring the height of children before and after retinoid treatment, although that is not a hard and fast rule. In terms of dosing, again, this is a general guide and it should be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis. But in general terms, isotretinoin can be started on a low dose, as an example, 10 milligrams daily with food. It can be increased as tolerated after one month. We aim for a dose range of 0 0.5 to 1 milligram per kilogram per day. There's a several different schools of thought um, with regards to achieving the total dose. Some people go by a weight-based dose, such as 120 to 150 milligrams per kilogram. Others go by um, stopping isotretinoin once a nodule-free period of two months is achieved. Um, again, go by what is recommended in your residency program and by supervisors, as well as on a judgment based on a case-by-case -case basis. It's important to also warn patients of a potential initial worsening period with isotretinoin. And in some difficult and challenging cases, this may require concurrently starting isotretinoin with 
and other medications such as oral prednisone to reduce the impact of the initial flare. In terms of acetretin, you can start with a low dose, 10 to 20 milligrams daily with food and review monthly and can increase to tolerated up to 35 milligrams per day. Some guidelines recommend a maximum of one milligram per kilogram per day, but a lot of patients don't tolerate beyond 35 milligrams per day due to the significant side effects. For consideration of retinoid prover or reprover, a retinoid can be started two weeks before phototherapy and the dose of phototherapy can be reduced by 25% one to two weeks after starting. In terms of the side effects of acetretin and isotretinoin, this is very significant. And it, this is very important to know, and it often gets tested very frequently in different residency programs. So as already mentioned, isotretinoin can cause acne disease flare in the first few weeks. It has a significant impact on organogenesis, and it is a teratogen. And its impact, its teratogenicity is estimated to be maximum at week three to six of the age of the fetus. And then in terms of side effect, we can group them into different systems. So in terms of mucocutaneous side effects, this includes chelitis, dry skin, uh, skin fragility, and facial redness or facial erythema. Very common side effects include mucosal dryness, dryness of the mouth and eyes, nosebleeds, contact lens intolerance, balanitis, and vaginal dryness. It can cause peeling skin, particularly on the palms and soles, but that tends to be more significant with acetretin rather than isotretinoin. Retinoid dermatitis has been reported. Staph aureus colonization and folliculitis can happen. There's been cases of diffuse alopecia, particularly with acetretin. Nail dystrophy can occur. Um, taking oral retinoids can lead to photosensitivity, so it's important to warn patients about potential for significant sunburn. Impaired wound healing is a theoretical effect of oral retinoids. And some surgeons may decide to delay elective surgery until the course of isotretinoin is completed. Isotretinoin is also associated with pyogenic granulomas. In terms of impact on hair, it can lead to diffuse alopecia of the scalp and body hair due to a telogen effluvium. It can result in curly hair and hair thinning. Nail fragility and anicholysis. Eyes include conjunctivitis, dry eyes, cataracts, corneal opacity, and impaired night vision. In terms of its impact on the central nervous system, this includes headache, benign intracranial hypertension, particularly when taking isotretinoin with tetracyclines, such as doxycycline and tetracycline. So it's important to counsel patients regard, regarding this and, and making sure they're not taking these medications concurrently. It can be associated with depression, mood impact, and seizures. Hepatic impact includes liver function test derangement, increased risk of concurrent methotrexate and ethanol. It's also associated with pancreatitis, particularly when taking isotretinoin concurrently with alcohol intake, binge drinking. It has a significant impact on musculoskeletal system, and this includes myalgia, arthralgia, back pain, chondritis, gout. For long-term oral retinoid use, there's a particular side effect called DISH, or diffuse interosseous skeletal hyperostosis. So it's important to monitor for that ask about bony pain and to consider frequent imaging if patients are on oral retinoids in the long term. Other impacts include osteoporosis and premature closure of epithesis. And in terms of labs which are impacted by oral retinoids, these include reduced white cell count, increased inflammatory markers such as ESR, increased liver function testing such as a transaminitis and an increased AST and ALT thrombocytosis or thrombocytopenia, increased lipids, particularly triglycerides, but also cholesterol and reduced HDLs, increased uric acid with gout, increased calcium, increased creatinine kinase with myalgia, particularly after exercise. Here are some photos to show some of these side effects, including an acne flare, granulomas, intertigo, chelitis, photosensitivity leading to sunburn as well as chelitis. We can see here telogen effluvium and hair thinning, um, as well as a pyogenic granuloma here on the right-hand side, which is associated with isotretinoin. These are cervical spine radiographs, both lateral view on the left-hand side, as well as a lumbar spine radiograph on the right-hand side, which demonstrate anterior ossifications. So this is 
consistent with retinoid hyperostosis. DISH is a non-inflammatory disorder of the bone, which results in ossification of the ligaments and antithesis and is associated with long-term oral retinoid use. It is also important to remember that oral retinoids can have interactions with other medications, so it's important to screen for these to prevent any unwanted adverse events. So it can interact with oral retino oral vitamin A, leading to hypervitaminosis A toxicity. It can interact with doxycycline and minocycline, leading to benign intracranial hypertension. It can lead to increased cyclosporine levels. Concurrent use of oral retinoid and methotrexate can lead to significant hepatotoxicity and toxic hepatitis, and can lead to cirrhosis in the longer term. Alcohol can convert acetretin into etretinate, and due to its long half-life, can lead to adverse events and requires a longer contraception period. It can have reduced efficacy of progesterone-only con contraception. And it's important to consider the metabolism of oral retinoids. So taking CYP3A4 inducers will decrease retinoid levels, whereas taking CYP3A4 inhibitors will increase retinoid levels. What are some adjunctive management considerations when prescribing acetretin or isotretinoin? So generally speaking, we should recommend two reliable forms of contraception, a barrier method as well as an oral contraceptive pill, and the combined oral contraceptive pill is recommended. Given the significant dryness, chelitis, and xerosis side effects of oral retinoids, general skin care measures should be emphasized, including moisturizer, soap-free wash, lip balm, sunscreen, sun protection, eye drops, lubricants. Alcohol should be avoided, particularly in females of reproductive age, which not only can interact with the medication, it can also convert the acetretin to etretinate as well. So for acetretin, it can also be used with narrowband UVB in retinoid UVB treatment, particularly for psoriasis. So thank you for joining us on this presentation on oral retinoids in dermatology. It was a fairly lengthy presentation. However, it is a very important topic that is close to heart of, of a lot of dermatologists and dermatology trainees. I hope you learned something about retinoids today and I hope to see you at the next presentation.